Good morning, people. It is great to have you here. Warm welcome to you for uh, this July 4th weekend as we gather for worship. We're about seven minutes out from the start of worship, so we invite you to settle into our virtual sanctuary, which you know is your kitchen or your den or your office, wherever you happen to be watching this, and put yourself in the right place to connect with God this morning. If you'd like to sign in and let us know that you're here, we would love that. You could do so at trinitylm.com forward slash sign dash in, sign dash in. Uh, you can also find that link uh, on our streaming page. And uh, relatively shortly, it is likely to be up uh, on our Facebook uh, broadcast as well in the comments section. So it's great to have you here.
Great to have you here. We begin with our opening hymn, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies. to stand as we take the opportunity to confess our sins and hear the words of absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another as we take a moment for our silent confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. I invite you to be seated. So I have some announcements. It's great to have you here if you're here in person, and it's great to have you here if you're joining us 
virtually. We hope that uh, through this time, you will connect more closely with God. Uh, do please sign in if you would. Uh, we're doing it electronically these days. You can go to trinitylm.com forward slash sign dash in. That's our virtual sign-in sheet. Let us know that you are here and we'll show the, show the names later on in the worship service so that uh, everyone can see who you're worshiping with today. You can also uh, see that uh, if you're watching on our uh, live stream page, it'll be under the window and hopefully there might even be a link for that on, uh, on Facebook in the comments section. Let us know that you were here. We love that. Coming up this Wednesday, July 8th at 1130, Ladies Lunch Out is uh, having lunch at Culver's here in town. So if you would like to join them, that is this Wednesday, July 8th at 1130. Coming up July 26th, we are having our annual meeting. We did not have that at the beginning of June because of the global pandemic and because we weren't supposed to get people together and it seemed hard to have a meeting when you couldn't get people together. So the council delayed that. Uh, it is now scheduled for July 26th. We still don't know how we're gonna do it, but uh, please look for further details and we're required to announce it in advance. So this is your announcement. <laughs> what are you gonna do? We can cancel it at a moment's notice, but we can't have it at a moment's notice. We gotta announce it in advance. There it is. Uh, Vacation Bible School is scheduled, scheduled for August 9 through 13. So uh, more details to follow. We have a committee working on it. If you would like to be part of that group that is, uh, that is planning it, please, 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 we could use your help. Let me know and we will add you to the invite list. Uh, that's what I know. A happy 4th of July weekend to everyone. Hi to Aunt Gail. Uh, I have it in my notes that I was supposed to say that. So it's great to see you this morning. Are there any other announcements? Seeing none. Uh, our, the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Our hymn is This is My Father's World.
The first reading for today comes from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoner of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Here ends the first reading. The second reading today is from Romans chapter 7, verses 15 through 25. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh I am a slave to the law of sin. This ends the reading. Time for our children's moment. We're going to do the pepper and dish soap trick. So what you'll need is you will need a container. You can use a bowl. I'm going to use a white plate. And Darren, what I'm going to do is we're going to walk down the aisle here in the hopes that you can shoot the camera at this and people at home will be able to see it. Does that sound good? It is not necessarily likely that it's going to work out that way, but the trick works. I mean, well, it's the physical effect. And I will, uh, here, come on this way. All right, so we're going to go here, and in a perfect world, you'll be able to shoot the camera right there. So, sorry to everyone else who's got to look this way. Uh, so, our reading says, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want. I do the very thing that I hate. So I'm going to put water there. This is like a human life. Basically, what it's saying is that sometimes we do things that just aren't the right thing to do, right? But 
right? But it seems at the time like it's a good idea, and then like afterwards we're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, right? We doing good here, Darren? So, and, and when we do that, it's called sin, and it's like, you see how pepper is now all over the surface of the water? Okay, it's like it gets on us, right? Would you want to drink that now? No, neither would I, right? And that's sort of what happens with our lives. And like, do you think that I could pick out each of those little pieces? Eh, it'd be really hard, wouldn't it? There's a lot of them. I don't know if I could do it, right? And sin sort of tangles us all, all up. It doesn't matter whether we're young or old. And it's a struggle. It's a problem. And uh, it'd be nice to get rid of it. So our reading says, who will rescue me? And it says, thanks be to God through Christ Jesus our Lord. And Jesus is like this dish soap. You see all that pepper there? What do you think is going to happen when I put a drop in the middle? <laughs> Isn't that cool? If you haven't done it, the pepper covers the water, but you put soap in the middle, and it all goes to the edges. Right. And Jesus does that for, for us. And like all our sin goes away. Isn't that cool? So let us say a prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks for all of your blessings and for Jesus who takes our sin away, for the Holy Spirit who guides us uh, to, to do your work. In Jesus' name, amen. And for you, fruit snacks, and for the kids at home, ask your parents. And hopefully they got something that you can eat. I suppose I could have just left the cart back there. That way I wouldn't be cluttering up the sanctuary, huh? Yeah, that happens. I invite you to stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Jesus said, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. And the Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I invite you to be seated, my friends. So, uh, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is an uh, uh, interesting time in our world. The <laughs> right. Uh, the uh, as I, I looked it up, COVID-19 uh, sort of uh, moved into our area of the globe in, in March. It was March 25th that the uh, governor issued a safer at home order. And three plus months later, it still seems to be going on. Kind of wish that it was not. Uh, our, Leah, Leah Fritchie, one of our Members, a librarian, posted this on her Facebook wall. If you could go to the next one. Please note, the post-apocalyptical fiction section has been moved to current affairs. <laughs> sure feels like it, doesn't it? 
I mean, it's not just like, a, you know, another cold running around. It's like, you know, now like everyone's trying to socially distance and like we're trying to, you know, be as safe as possible and people are sort of stuck in their houses and there's all these, all these side effects, if you will, of, of the pandemic. Uh, calls to domestic abuse hotlines are higher than they have been in the past and divorce inquiries are up and calls to hotlines for emotional distress and online therapy are up. And, uh, and, there's, and the e e other ones which are uh, even str stranger zoos that are short on income are wondering if they might uh, feed some of their animals to other animals <laughs> to, to uh, try and save some of them. Uh, on the good side, school shootings are down, uh, I suppose, because kids are not in school uh, to shoot. Uh, for, on the good side, from the science world, smaller earthquakes are easier to detect, and uh, we're able to learn more about our, how our planet works. Air pollution is down in major cities, potentially saving the lives of those who are vulnerable breathing-wise. Sales of comfort foods are up. If you own stock in a string cheese company, you're probably doing quite well right now, as well as plexiglass. Uh, their, their market had been evaporating, and now uh, they're doing quite well, apparently. So God bless them. Uh, other things going on, uh, internet searches for COVID-19 symptoms are up. Uh, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary this year has added, uh, they always add words, uh, and they, this year they have added phrases, uh, patient zero, contact tracing, and super spreader. Whether it's consider that good or not, it, it is a reflection of our times. Uh, this one is sad, the Unicode Consortium the nonprofit organization that encodes new emojis, you know, those smiley faces and thumbs ups that you have on your phone, uh, has announced the postponement of the next group of emojis by six months. Emojis are typically added to mob mobile devices in September. I didn't realize that, but apparently they are. Uh, th this likely will not happen now until uh, spring of 2021. I know. I want my mo more emojis too. Um, College students in Tuskegee, Alabama, I don't know if you've heard this, are having parties with side bets of who will be diagnosed first. <laughs> Whoever is the first to come back with a positive diagnosis gets the pot. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and our, I think just the, the, the stress and the, the time that people have on, on their hands, it is, uh, it is causing us to pay attention to social issues. That, that have plagued us, uh, but maybe we were able to sort of not notice. Uh, here in town, uh, there, there were some college students came through, they were protesting for Black Lives Matter uh, Friday. And uh, there were people who dr were driving around Commons Park flying Confederate flags. And uh, I went on down because uh, I'm a pastor and it, seem like someone should be praying for good to come out of it. And uh, also I'm a parent and I guess someone should be looking out for the kids if possible. And uh, it was just, uh, I don't know, conflict is always emotionally draining. And someone's car got hit and I ended up sort of waiting around to sort of just help if I could. But like everything else in the pandemic, you know, it was, it was grueling and tiring and just sort of wore you out. And I came back to the sanctuary here and I walked in and this is what I saw. And I don't know if you could tell from the picture, it was more dramatic in person. Uh, the, the, it's the baptismal font, but the light, the sunlight was streaming in the stained glass window and hit it and because it's round, it just sort of threw light everywhere. And uh, it was like God saying, you know, in the middle of everything, this is your hope, your baptism, your relationship with God. 
That's our hope for ourselves. And on this July 4th weekend, it's our hope for our country as well. Because America, it has a lot to be proud of. I mean, we've, we have done uh, some great things. We're an industrial, technological, military powerhouse. The world depends on our economy. You know, when the president wants to throw his weight around, the world has to listen. Uh, and that, in that regard, America was great before, and it is still great now. At the same time, uh, we are, perhaps like everywhere, beset by our own struggles. America is this crazy mix uh, of people. We are largely still, somewhere inside ourselves, a bunch of scrappy immigrants who came over seeking religious freedom or who were brought here against our will on slave ships or who flew over on a student visa and stayed or who fled here to escape famine or political oppression or who climbed over to find a better life for our families or were here in the first place and someone took our land and, but we're still here or who got here some other way and we've all been thrown together. And we make up this country not ruled by a dictator or the whim of a king, but founded, uh, our constitution starts, we the people, founded on this premise that sometimes we realize it better and sometimes worse, but God made us all equal. And with that being the case, in a way that's more significant than for other countries, perhaps the best birthday gift we can give to our nation is to be better people. In a nation of the people, by the people, for the people, with its great mishmash of people, if we as its people are more fair and more generous and more willing to see the world from other people's point of view and more gracious and more loving, then our country will be better for it. And while we can't just dictate that for other people, we can, do, we can seek that for ourselves. In our gospel reading, Jesus is talking about how to be better people. And he starts by uh, commenting on his generation, which applies to every generation and ours as well. And he says that they're not listening to the people that God sends them. And he says you're like kids in a marketplace that can't decide whether to play weddings or funerals, and so they don't, you don't play anything. You look at John, who's living in the, the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey, and you say, oh, he's got a demon. And then Jesus says, you look at Jesus, Who's, who's eating with, with sinners and tax collectors and say he's a glutton and a drunkard. And he points out that his generation has taken offense at both and so they're not listening to either. And then he says, but wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. And it refers back to the beginning of the chapter where John's disciples had come and said, you know, are you the Messiah? And he said, well, look at what I do. Right? The, the, I mean, the, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them. The world is well and living in harmony. What do you think? And then he mo moves on and he describes how to live in God's image in terms of who we work for. If you work for the world, the world is always calling us to, to buy the next thing, to, 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 to be ahead, to, to, to keep up with the Joneses, you know, to, to be better at than, to compete with, to get the best of, to dominate, to be in charge of, to be prestigious, to be great, to be powerful. And it promises this is going to make us happy and it never really does. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. 
And he calls us to be caring and gracious and fair and brave. To live in harmony and to stand against injustice but for people. To stand for a world where everyone's safe and everyone has enough and everyone's treated with dignity, especially the most vulnerable among us, whomever they happen to be at any moment. He says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And it applies to us as well. I was talking with Vicar Sterling, and if you're watching, I hope you don't mind that I share. I'm sorry. I, I hope you don't. And if you do, write me a nasty email. Uh, there we are. Uh, <laughs> or call me. Uh, but, 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 you know, in, in, in fairness, because he, he was here, and uh, he's a student, and he depends on the, the seminary and the synod for placement and graduation, and he was talking about looking to the synod for help and support and guidance and direction and resources for ministry, all of which makes total sense when you're going through the candidacy process, right? And, but, but like, like I know from experience, like there's only so much that the synod can do for you, right? And, and like there's only so much the seminary can do for you. And I finally I was like, you know, you know, you don't work for the synod. You don't work for the synod. You don't work for the congregation. You don't work for the council. You work for God. What, what, like that's the deal. What, like nothing else in my experience provides the kind of help that a church or a pastor or a Christian needs. I mean, that's where, the, that's where the money comes from. That's where the people come from. That's where the work comes from, is from God. And, and we're partners with the Synod. And we're partners, like pastor, I'm partnered with the congregation, with the council, for sure. Like, we need each other. We work hand in hand. We care about each other and, and love one another. But they can't save us. And they're not the ultimate voice that we listen to. We work for God. And it's the same for everyone. Right? You may work for a company. They, they write your paycheck. But at the end of the day, you work for God. You know, we live under laws. We look to society for help and defense. But in the end, we don't work for them. God is the one who can make things work out and God's the one who can save us. And God's the one that can bring harmony when times are good and when times are such that the post-apocalyptic, I can't even say it, post-apocalyptic fiction section has been moved to current affairs. And it's in our relationship with Jesus that we become better people, the people that God made us to be. And our lives are improved and our nation is improved. Jesus says, Come to me, you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 611, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say.
we get to see, because there are uh, 15 of us, 16 here, and we get to see who else is here, which is awesome. So worshiping with us today right now, we got Eileen Bailing in the halls, Denise Schrader and Marilyn Mason and the rest of that list, and Christian Tolley, and uh, Wayne and Carol are here, and Andrea Crows are here, is here, and Judy and Rich Rao, good to have you. Hi, Grandma and Grandpa. <laughs> and Tony and Emma are here, and Red and Karen. And Pam Mullins here. Hope and Natalie, it's great to have you here. Steve and Holly. Oh, you're actually here. <laughs> you're here, here. And Jeff and Diane and Gwen and Sharon, great to have you. And Kim and Charlie and John and Darla. Tom and Shell Kempfer. And Jennifer Winter and Sharon O'Reilly and Christina Marie. Todd Larson's here as well. It's great to have everybody. We'll show those names again at the end of the worship service. So I know that I certainly was not able to say them all but at least you'll be able to see them at that point. I've got uh, prayer requests. A uh, prayer of thanks uh, for the birth of Isabel Silverzon. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Who is uh, the, the daughter of Bill and Jillian, who are, uh, you, you might recognize them, they're tall. So, yep. Right on, I got her down. Thank you. Thank you, Maury. Uh, we also uh, give thanks for uh, the, the technically uh, the, the, the reception into membership of uh, Dean and Barb Habheger, who are our first virtually received members here at Trinity. Uh, yay! <laughs> so it's great uh, to, to have them here, and uh, apparently that's the wave of the future, at least for the near future. So. Uh, if you are watching this and you would like to, to join uh, as a member of Trinity, uh, let me know and we will find a way to make that happen. <laughs> it is a strange world we live in. We'll pray for blessings on Monica Hall, who is appointed uh, Jefferson County District Attorney. Uh, so, yeah, congratulations to her and uh, good for us to have someone of her caliber doing that job. And prayers for her mother, Kathleen, yes, as well as Seuss Lawson and Deb's dad. We keep them in our prayers for healing. And uh, that's what I, no, Kylie Sue? Yeah, Kylie Sue. Kylie Sue, I'm sorry. Everyone in Texas, COVID is horrific down there, and now it's 154 counties in Texas. My mom's county is number seven with the most amount of cases. Oh. And she's quite scared, so. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, I, in the back of my mind, I really was hoping this thing would go away over the summer. Like, I knew that the people who know stuff were saying, oh, it might not. But you know what? It might. But, um, yeah. And so there's treatment for that? Or yeah. There's yeah, he had, the, the, he had two, um, basically his bone marrow stopped producing, and he had two left tubes removed, and they had to put him in hospital. Yeah. <laughs> so for those, uh, for those who were not here, do not remember, we prayed for a young man uh, last week, a uh, two-year-old who, to all they could see, had leukemia, and uh, during this past week, uh, we are very... I saw him on Wednesday. He looks amazing. That's, uh, <laughs> he does not have leukemia. And he has a blood condition that a couple of transfusions have made very much better. And hopefully he will be well now. Uh, also, for those who, uh, I guess I should have, but good news, it's good to hear. Uh, Carrie Mess posted on the, on the prayer wall that Ben who lat two years ago, uh, they believed he had cancer, and we prayed crazy for his well-being, and uh, turned out 
uh, to be misdiagnosis, healing, miracle, whatever it was, God works in mysterious ways, but, uh, but does not have cancer. And, and so, um, thank you. <laughs> uh, would you please stand and let us pray? Oh, sorry, Stace. Yeah. Might as well pray for uh, VBS too while we're at it. Okay, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Almighty God, we give you thanks this day for every blessing that you have poured out from heaven on us. We thank you for this country, for the freedom to gather together and... Uh, even under conditions such as this, to worship you as our conscience dictates. We give you thanks for everybody who works for the common good, for, for our service people, for our elected officials, for our police and our firefighters and our e, uh, emergency medical personnel. Uh, we give thanks uh, for the birth of all babies and pray that you would keep them healthy and well and help them grow up, especially uh, Isabel Silberzon. We give you thanks for this community and for all who are members here and those newly joined, especially Dean and Barb Habhegger. We pray for uh, Monica Hall as she takes on the duties of district attorney. We pray for guidance for all colleges and schools and everywhere that is helping our kids learn and grow, that you would give them wisdom and help them to make choices which are beneficial to the people they serve. We pray for uh, healing for Deb's dad and Sue, for Kathleen. We give you thanks that, that Shane does not have leukemia and that there is a, a solution or treatment for the condition he does have and that he looks like he'll be well and we glorify you for that and for Ben as well. We pray for Kaylee, Sue and Jenny and their family. And Lord, we pray for everyone in Texas and everywhere where uh, COVID-19 numbers are increasing, Lord, that you, would, uh, that you would beat it back, that you would make them well, that you would deliver us from this pandemic. These and all other things that you know that we need Please provide as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, this is the point in the service where normally we would uh, pass an offering plate. Uh, given the present pandemic, we're not going to do that. There is a receptacle out there in the gathering space if you brought an offering with you and like, would like to drop it in. If you're online and would like to support the ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church, you can do so electronically at uh, Trinity L trinitylm.com forward slash give trinitylm.com forward slash give there's also a button on our website for that uh, and as always if the pandemic has damaged your employment and your income uh, let us carry you until things get better and then we would be grateful for your support our song is eternal father strong to save
invite you to stand and join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Uh, our service is going to conclude with... Uh, my eyes have seen the glory. Uh, after that, if you would like to stay, you are certainly welcome to. We will have a brief communion service. If you would like to head out, you are welcome to do that as well as, uh, as you decide. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Big thank you to Aaron White for his trumpet this morning and Linda Dish. And Drew and Stacy for uh, leading our songs to Darren back in the uh, AV room and to my dear wife Sue who was logging names and who is the reason you can see who's here this morning. So God bless you all for joining us and it is so great to have you here.
Gabby and Angie, if you're still watching. Great to have you with us. Hey, Aaron did well, didn't he? 